Hi guys, welcome to our streaming safari today. I'm Caitlin and I'm Megan. And we are talking Endangered Species Day. So first, as always, I do want to say thank you to anyone who's made any donations to us. That is really helpful. You just making faces. I'm worried that the phone's already dying. The birds. <laughs> uh, the birds are very loud. So we do have Z out today. Um, he's hanging out on his harness here. So he's hanging out with us and it made some of our other birds a little bit jealous. So we'll have to go talk to them in a minute if you hear them yelling in the background. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, we do want to say thank you to anyone who has donated anything that really helps us out It keeps us surviving right now while we are in this shutdown. So we are staying safe and we're staying um, Close to the public for right now, so we don't have any of our regular admissions So it really helps if you guys throw any little bit our way if you added us to Amazon smile That's really helpful because that really does add up the more people that add us the more help we get. If you've already done that or you don't have any extra money right now, which is fine, we totally understand that. We're kind of in the same boat. So just share. If you share our posts and share what we're doing here, that's really helpful to us because then other people could donate and also share. So share, donate, thank you so much. You see we are joined by Ozzy. So Megan, do you want to tell us a little bit about today? What is today? Why are we doing this? Oh uh, yeah, so today is Endangered Species Day, which this is the day to sort of bring awareness um, to all the species out there that are currently going through some hard times right now. Um, so most of our information that we have here uh, comes from the IUCN uh, Red List. Um, so the IUCN stands for the International Union for the Conservation of Nature. And the IUCN Red List is recognized as the most authoritative guide to the status of biological diversity. So they have all these uh, species that they assess, um, both plant and animal species, and they provide um, sort of on a scale how to tell us how endangered they are. He's gonna flip about his bucket. Three, yeah, six. Okay. <laughs> got his bucket. Ozzy wants attention. Yes. We're not talking about Ozzy, so he's gonna throw his, throw his bucket off of his wall there. That has his pellets in it, so Ozzy does have a variety of food that he eats every day. And in that bucket are his pellets, just like your dog might have a formulated food that's just for them. Same thing with Ozzy, he's got his pellets in there, but I think it's almost empty, so he's going to try and walk it. <laughs> he's like, you will look at me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so as I was saying a little bit earlier, before Ozzy decided to steal the show, um, about 36% of all the species um, assessed by the IUCN are threatened with extinction. So quite a bit of the species on Earth are going through a little bit of a hard time right now. Yeah, just as we take over more environments, a lot of times that's a huge problem. There's just the more of us there are and the more space we take up, the less space there are for the animals. So we did actually draw out their list here so you guys can see it a little bit more clearly. So when they do add an animal to the IUCN list, what they do is they assess how many of those animals are still in captivity and how many are in the wild. And then they um, list them. So it starts off with the least concern. That means that the species is doing pretty well. There's quite a few out there. And then it moves up from there to near threatened, vulnerable, endangered, critically endangered, extinct in the wild, which means there aren't any more in the wild. Um, there aren't any more in the wild, you can only find those in human care, and extinct altogether, which means there aren't any more. Think dinosaurs when you think extinction. If you don't, if they're not around anymore, they used to be around, but all we have are fossils and bones, that means they're extinct entirely. If you can only find them in zoos and other facilities, my goodness, the birds are noisy today. <laughs> um, then they are just extinct in the wild and then it goes on from there. So, we have a couple animals out today that actually are fall on this list somewhere. Oh, Megan, where do giraffes fall? Uh, so giraffes, as a whole, all the giraffes total are considered vulnerable on the scale. Um, so that's one step of right before endangered. Oh, it's Megan, right? Giraffe. But reticulated giraffes, which is the species of giraffe that Ozzy is, are, as of 2018, are actually considered endangered. Um, they've had a decline of 56% over the last 30 years. Oh man, what are you going to get to the No. 
<laughs> I can write, I promise. I wrote these other words. <laughs> pretty difficult. I write upside down, but this is a new one for me. And we also have Z out. What about Z? Where does Z go? Uh, so Z is a military uh -huh. macaw, and as of 2016, military macaws are also considered vulnerable, uh, but their population is still in decline. So they are, um, they could become endangered pretty soon here. So why do why are these guys vulnerable? Why are they endangered? You said their populations are declining. What is causing that? So the, the biggest thing, uh, especially for giraffes, um, is habitat loss. Um, so as people are you know, expanding, building new civilizations, they are sort of taking away from the natural habitats that the animals live in. Or also their current habitats that are still there in a little bit of a deterioration. Um, also with giraffes and birds especially, there is a, a problem with the pet trade, so they're being either illegally poached or, or killed. Yeah, so the pet trade is a huge one. A lot of people see these guys, especially as you see us when we're talking about them and we're having so much fun. They let us be cuddly with them and love on them. Um, you're like, ooh, I want one. And they are, they're so much fun, but it's like having a two-year-old for the rest of your life. So if you are thinking about getting a pet parrot, you really have to take that into consideration. They're loud, they're messy, they're very needy, and they live about as long as you do. These guys right here can live about 60 years if we're taking good care of them. And so, there it goes. There it goes. We were waiting for it. It was going to happen. <laughs> Thanks, Oz. And who gets to clean that up? We do. We do. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> so, uh... Yeah, so speaking of what we do, that is what we do on a daily basis. We clean up after the animals and we take care of them. But zoological facilities on a whole, there's, there's a reason we're here. And one of the biggest important reasons for zoos to exist is to help animals that are on this list. So we want to make sure that we're supporting conservation efforts and that we're helping the animals in the wild to thrive there and not become extinct. That's the big goal here, is we don't want to lose any more species. So, um, we are going to talk about a couple animals. We don't have any here, but there are a couple animals as a whole group that actually went extinct in the wild that zoos are trying to help out. So you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so first I'm going to talk about the California condor. Uh, they officially went extinct in the wild in 1987. They pulled all the remaining birds that were out there into the zoos to um, breed them and help release them back into the wild. And due to the conservation efforts made by those people, they were successfully uh, reintroduced to the wild in the Southwest United States, California, Utah, Arizona, and there are now about 337 wild condors that are out there. So they were extinct in the wild if you look at the scale, and they are now critically endangered, um, but, but there is a step in the right direction. Yeah, so let's start it off here. Condors. And we got to move down. That's the whole goal, is we want to keep them going. So if they do continue to thrive, hopefully we can bring that population back up until they're not as vulnerable anymore. So that is our goal as zoos. We do want to keep these guys safe, and we also want to help out any of the wild. You can hear the lions roar right <laughs> I know I did one before and I keep talking and you can't hear anything I'm saying because the lions are much louder than I am. <laughs> Go ahead and let them finish. They have a lot to say. <laughs> Question. Can parrots talk? Uh, they can. Z probably won't right now. So they can talk. It depends on the parrot. So Z has a couple words. He mostly says hello and he laughs like Denise, so we all found that very fun. Um, but he does like to say hello. We like to say Z is our little welcoming committee. When you guys are able to come out and visit us, if you walk down our center walkway, you hear someone saying hello, it is most likely Z. He loves to say hello as you walk by, but when he's out and he's getting a lot of attention, he doesn't say hello very often at all. 
So you can get them to say hello by capturing. It's one of the training techniques um, that we have here is you can capture that behavior. So every time he says hello, we go ahead and give him a treat for it. Eventually he realizes that we like it when he says hello. So then eventually you can ask, can you say hello? And he'll say hello and then you'll give him a treat. A couple of our other birds do it. Nazi. <laughs> so he mostly just talks when he wants to, which is pretty typical of their two-year-old mentality. They do what they want, when they want. So they do talk, just depends on when they want. Um, so let's see, we talked about condors. We also wanted to talk about oryxes, right? Uh, yep. All right, so what about oryxes? What so, are oryxes for anybody who doesn't know? Uh, oryx <laughs> is a type of antelope that has really big horns that go right up in the air. Um, so the species of oryx we're going to touch on is the scimitar horned oryx that, like I said, has those giant horns. Um, they were a very similar situation to the California condor. Um, they actually did go extinct in the wild, um, but the zoos have successfully reintroduced them onto a nature preserve. And in the past year, they have actually had the first two natural births on that nature preserve. But as of right now, they are still extinct in the wild. But hopefully, um, once if everything goes successful on that preserve, then they can be back to natural wild. Question. What is the difference between horns, ossicones, and antlers? Ooh, that's a good question. All right, so, let's see. Ossicones are what Aussie has, so giraffes have ossicones. They are actually a calcification that solidifies to their skull. So they actually become a part of their skull. And it protects their head kind of like a natural, if you can hear me. <laughs> we have so much things going on. <laughs> All the joys of being outside. Uh, it protects their head kind of like a built-in helmet. So those guys have ossicones because they actually will fight with each other and slam their necks into each other and they need that extra protection. Uh, what we're talking about, horns. Horns are kind of like our fingernails, so they are a really strong buildup, and animals use those either to protect themselves or attack other animals. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to feed you more answers about it. <laughs> yeah, Megan will, help, Megan will help me out so with the answer. Horns are also their, their bones. They're part of the animal skull, and they will stay uh, on their skull for their whole life unless they get damaged. Um, antlers, um, think of like deer or moose, they, they are also bone, they, they grow, but they, they are shed every year, so, so the fall antlers off. fall off every year. Yes. There's one other thing too. What do they think? What are we missing? <laughs> so the horns are one projection, and then the antlers have multi-projections. Oh yes, so uh, horns are, if you see a, give me an example of an animal's horns, a rhinoceros. So if you see rhino horns, they are one solid piece. They come up kind of like a spike, whereas antlers actually have branches on them. So they'll come up, but then they separate. So you have those extra, like she said, think reindeers. So reindeers, reindeer. <laughs> so they come up and they actually branch out. And like Megan said, they do shed off. And they will also, they also have a velvet, what's that called? Velvet, thank you, layer on the outside that will shed off as well. Perfect. All right. So we are talking, I know you guys have been listening, or hopefully you've been listening, <laughs> to uh, some of our interviews with people who work in the animal field and the different kind of jobs you could have if you are interested in this field. And this shows you why it's so important. This is one of our most important things that we do, is we help to preserve animals that are extinct in the wild. And we also try to bring them back to the wild so that we aren't missing all of those populations of animals. And working in the field like these scientists do to try and discover which animals, tagging them and tracking them and figuring out which animals need our help the most, that's also an animal care job. Yes. Can you be a citizen scientist at home? You absolutely can. So yeah, you guys can help out by just mostly learning more about what's going on. We also have, we like to support the Giraffe Conservation Foundation here. So a fun way that you can help out at home actually is these guys next week is, next month, next month thank you. Next month is Giraffe Conservation Day and the Giraffe Conservation Foundation is actually running a virtual 5K. 5K, thank you, I knew it was some kind of marathon. 5K and you guys can participate at home since we are still practicing social distancing. As you can see, Megan is a little bit far away from me. <laughs> uh, we're doing a, they're doing a virtual 5K to help raise funds. 
Um, so yeah, if you guys are researching any of those awesome things at home, just you know, you can also help by not polluting. So anything, any recyclables, make sure those make it into the recycling bin. All of those things help because all of the um, garbage that makes it into our oceans and into our uh, environment, those are really bad for the animals. So you definitely want to make sure that you are recycling those and keeping as much of the, that problem out of the wild as possible. So you can help at home in a lot of different ways. Question. There's one more. Uh, Zooniverse. Zooniverse. Oh, I don't know that one. Oh, do you know about that? Okay, great. Oh, that's just a nice thing. All right, she's going to share that with us now. All right, so Zooniverse is another way you can be a citizen scientist at home. They have a lot of different things that you can do at home to help with identifying animals in the wild. So they have camera traps, they have photos taken, and they need many, many people to look at the photos to identify the animals or different things. Some of the photos you don't see anything, but there's a lot of really cool stuff that you can find when you're on Zooniverse.org, and they have a ton of different things. I think they even have stuff for like astrology. Don't quote me though, I'm not 100% on that. <laughs> yeah, but animal stuff, I'm 100%, <laughs> they've got that. I did one for Africa and it's a lot of fun. It's kind of addicting once you get going because you're like, what photo am I gonna get next? What am I gonna see? Um, I know uh, I've seen a hyena in one of them. I know Sean's seen a couple of things. I got her addicted to it for a bit. Um, and then we have another question. When are we going to reopen? Okay, so right now we're just following the guidelines of what's laid out for us by the county and the state and we're trying to follow all of their protocols. So in phase one, which is where Nevada's at right now, um, zoos are specifically on the list of not opening. So unfortunately we're not able to open right now, but we do want to stay safe so we are following all of those guidelines. So we're kind of waiting for them to let us know when we can let you guys know. So we will keep you posted. We'll definitely post about it here on Facebook. Um, we'll let everybody know when we are opening. We're just really not sure yet. So we are playing it by ear. Um, we're hoping soon. <laughs> hoping. But I know we're all hoping for a lot. So we'll see. We do want to stay safe and uh, make sure that we are following those guidelines though. So we are following what they tell us to. All right. So should we get started with our craft though? All right. So today we are making hand print animals, which we forgot to paint for. So that's fun. <laughs> Let me see if I can get to call that while Megan shows you some samples. Power on. Right, so basically what you're going to do, all you really need okay, is some um, paper uh, and some paint and just your hands. Maybe some other coloring, uh, color pencils or markers if you like. Um, all you need to do is basically paint your hand. You can stamp it down and then you can sort of make some kind of animal. This is a lion here, and we also have a tortoise, turtle. Oh, I thought that was a stegosaur. I don't, it could be a stegosaurus, <laughs> whatever you want it to be. You can make any kind of animals. You can make extinct animals too. Um, dinosaurs, yeah, definitely are fun. And here is a giraffe as well. So we've got lots of different, lots of different options. So. All right, so we do have paint on the way. So Megan, what color paper do you want? Because I brought out a couple colors. Um, I'll take the purple one, I guess. All right, and I'll take the orange one. And we have a giraffe. Yeah, if you guys do have any questions about... Uh, Z's gonna help me with my paper. Thank you, Z. Oh. <laughs> so if you guys do have any questions about any of the animals that we have out or any of the animals that you've okay. seen in any of our safaris, um, don't hesitate to ask or any other questions as well. <laughs> Z is very helpful. You can see this is what birds do. So this is a good example of why you don't want them in your house. Um, they will do this to your door frames, to your floors and your walls. They will destroy everything. Question. Haven't they helped you with your nails and your manicures before? Oh yes, absolutely. So, um, Ozzy likes to do our painting, our nail polish, but these guys like to take it off. So, um, they do groom, um, they groom each other and when they go to groom us, they usually pull at our fingernails and try to groom that. Um, especially if you have any moles or anything, they will also try to remove those for you. That's not great. Right, Z? Um, yeah. So helpful. Are you so helpful? Yes. Yes, we are. So Z, we were talking about, is a military macaw. Military macaws are from mostly the Central America, Mexico area. 
And you can see they are called, one of the reasons they're called military macaws is that little red beret on their head. He's going to go try and attack Robert. He doesn't like boys. <laughs> so um, these guys do usually choose favorite and least favorite keepers. And none of our male keepers have done anything to Z, I promise. Um, but when he came oh, to us. I don't know why it switched to me. I don't oh. want that. <laughs> Hi, Denise. Um, one of our... Uh, when he came to us, he just likes girls better. So he's really sweet with us. Like you can see, he puts his beak. They do have about 500 pounds of pressure per square inch in that beak. So he could break my finger really easily. But you can see, I trust him. He puts his beak on my fingers. I'm not worried about it. Um, Robert, he would definitely break his finger right off. Huh. He should not. All right. So now that I have this nice ripped up paper, thank you. <laughs> Looks like Megan is going to be uh, making a blue animal. Robert doesn't know what color animals are. <laughs> what if you're making a shark? How about a shark? shark? I mean, they're not really blue per se, but... Yeah. Maybe like put your fingers together with your thumb up for the fin. Mm. Or like a sunfish or something? Sure, sunfish, that's a great one. There you go. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, is that what we have? Our we got blue choice blue or pink. We only have one brush. So. Okay, okay. I'll make a blue animal too. I'll make a bird. <laughs> so if you have paint, you're gonna help me. If you do have paint, you just want to paint it right onto your hand. Just a nice thin layer. If you put too much paint on there, you're gonna end up with extra mess. I painted my right hand. That was really smart. Cause I'm not gonna be able to write anything. <laughs> you guys don't have any markers either. No. No. <laughs> I'm also right handed, and I did the same. Thing. We were. <laughs> Caroline, will you bring us a marker, please? Okay, so like a marker or... Any kind of marker. Okay. Thank you. A couple? You guys are prepared. We're prepared for our craft today. We prepared this nice <gasps> list for you. We did a lot of research. We did a lot of research so we could do this talk at the right way, so... <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to put my... Let's see, how do I want to do my bird? Oh, you know what? I'm going to do... One wing. I'm gonna do both hands, so this blue is pretty, it's got a spark. It is, yeah. <laughs> right. Thank you, Mark Caroline. Fun, we work as a team here, so uh, we are always helping each other out. This is not the first time any one of us has called for something, and it will not be the last. All right. You want an eye. I know that. We have two fins, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wait, I need to get painted. You get painted again? Yeah. All right, so I have a bird. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna give it a tail. I'm gonna give it a tail. It's gonna be a macaw. It's a very so, pretty macaw. You guys, uh, you can get creative with this. So how? I don't you know why it keeps switching back to my face. <laughs> <laughs> we use, excuse me. We're using my phone today, and apparently it really likes to be. All right, so yeah, however you guys want to get creative with this, use your fingerprints, use your fingers, use your whole hand, make a handprint, and you can turn it into any animal you want. So I'm gonna outline mine so we can tell it's a bird. Yay. You can name it. <laughs> I'm not very creative. You can name it Fred. Fred. Isn't that what Robert named his spider earlier? We found a spider earlier and uh, named it. Spiders are really important, so if you can save spiders, put them outdoors, because I know I don't like spiders, but they are very helpful to our environment, so we want to keep those guys around and have them question. Why are they helpful? Um, so these spiders actually are all animals, thank you. <laughs> now my tail is off. Um, are a part of our um ecosystem so these those guys help to maintain our bug population so spiders eat other bugs so we're not overrun with um all sorts of insects because i know we don't want that um <laughs> we have a tractor trying to run us over right now all right so here is my bird i made a macaw it's blue and red, so I guess it's more like a green wing, less like Z. So that's the colors I had. So, um, Megan, did we see Fred? I got Fred. This one I'll name mine. Here. I'll say I made Angelo. So Angelo is one of our macaws. He's a green wing macaw. So he has a lot of red and some blue on him. And some green. So, uh, I named mine Angelo. 
<laughs> All right. So um, now that our hands are nice and blue, we will go wash our hands. If you guys make any animals with your handprints, please share them in the comments. We always want to see your artwork. We love it when you guys participate with us. And thanks again for all of your donations. Anyone who's adding us on Amazon Smile or also just sharing our posts, that's so helpful. Right now we don't have those general admissions to get all of our income that we normally have. And so to help feed our animals and take care of them while we are closed, we are relying on donations. So thank you guys so much for any donations you've made. Thank you for adding us to your Amazon Smile. And if you haven't done so yet, please sign up for that and please make any donations you can. Uh, I don't think anyone wants to buy our artwork, but if you did want to buy an Aussie painting, that's a great way to help and support. You can find those on our website at lionhabitatranch.org. We have a question. What were those noises a minute ago with uh, Aussie? It sounded like he was kicking the fence. Mm, so, uh, he is playing with his hay basket. So one of Aussie's natural behaviors for eating is to reach up into tall trees. So we like to keep the main staple of his diet up high. So he has a basket on that side that is a tall basket that he keeps his hay in. You can also see one on the outside of his wall here. And that's where he gets the majority of his diet. He likes to play with everything. He is like a kid, so he is six and he acts like it. So anything he can get into or play with, he will. So since they have that hay there, um, he's probably just messing with his basket, makes a little bit of a loud noise. Um, yeah, so if you do have any more questions, thanks for asking. Um, go ahead and leave them in the comments and we'll get back to you later since we are wrapping up here, but we will at answer any of your questions or comments if you leave them for us. And again, share your artwork and thank you so much for donations. So if you do have any little bit you can send our way, please do that. We really appreciate it. And thanks for checking in. We'll see you guys next time.